Okay, hi everyone. It's been like a week since I did my last video. Um, and this is my first sketchbook and I thought we'd revisit it again. So I'm kind of here for round three with it. The major reason that I'm, I'm doing so much with it is because as you can see, it's a sketchbook with a lot of pages. It's got like probably about a hundred pages in here um maybe 120 somewhere in there it's a a piccadilly sketchbook they make them at barnes and noble or they barnes and noble distributes them anyway um so i thought we'd start kind of in the middle and this is where this is like really a good starting point for me so this is a idea for a larger painting of a futuristic sort of city where you have um, water wheels and windmills um, and different kinds of power sources like that because you know the city only uses alternative forms of power because the global warming has caused a rise in sea levels, which means all the streets in the lower areas in the city have turned into, um, have turned into water. So pretty much like the city is kind of like Venice in that respect. So if you look up, up close here, you can see how, how it's like, um, different different waterways and then this building is kind of sitting in the middle and, and instead of having parking spaces in front of it, it has a dock in front of it and then there's a certain element of like a steampunk thing going on I just have some design things in here and like can't really see it this well that well here but there's a uh this is like a bridge on a crank thing so you can um, if you're sailing a boat or you have a larger boat that can't get through here, you can crank up the bridge and this is kind of like a road that goes through and sort of a little, little place with open houses and stands and different stuff like that. But I just try to imagine what like a future would be that wouldn't totally be a bummer for everybody, but would also be kind of a realistic, like this is what happens you know, and then it's, it's kind of sunset. So there's gold on the clouds here. And you can see that I've, I've kind of highlighted the windows in these areas with gold. And I used a pen for that. And this is acrylic paint. So these, this paper is really not great paper. It's like very thin and just kind of, kind of yucky. So I ended up, I started out with this as a watercolor and it just wouldn't hold much water even though I put gesso on it so I used acrylic to paint this um, and I I really think that like if this this little storefront here was anywhere it would be in this town here so that's my thought about that now I think I've shown you all of these up to um, yeah up to here so this is just my table in my room and these are are like inks that I use so this is different inks and I actually use some of the ink to draw the inks um, and then there's some other things on the table too like a bottle of lotion and a container of gesso and these brushes and this page originally like I have sort of a theme for the sketchbook where I write grocery lists and things that are going on in my life and then I gesso over that and then I do my painting on top of that. So this is like the times that the Taylor Garbage Company, uh, you know, is open and <laughs> the different types of things that they accept in there and I drew a little garbage can down here. So, um, yes, yeah. so this was here first and then I kind of drew this stuff out afterwards on top of some other stuff in the background. But I feel like this whole sketchbook has been kind of a statement about how art fits into my life. And this is a steampunk character. Um, she actually lives in uh, this city here. 
So she is a boat pilot because they don't have that many cars anymore. Um, and this is a, like, I did this first and then I painted over this page and did the rest of the bouquet on top of it. So I'm not sure if I want to paint this or not or just paint the background. So this is not really totally done. These are some dandelions. And this is a pretty funny story. Now, I thought this was like, this is actually, I actually went to this place to sketch it. And this, I thought was some kind of grain mill, right? And then while I was sketching, <laughs> these like, these four people who look like uh, a, a guy and his son and then like maybe his wife and another friend of his were walking across the parking lot and uh, they were kind of pale, even the black guy. And like, they looked a little shocked and I was like, what's the matter? And there's like, they're like, there's pools of blood back there. And I was like, oh great. What did I get myself into? This is pretty horrifying. So after I was done drawing this giant sort of agricultural building, well, I, I actually sort of left like right after they said that. Cause I was like, what if somebody like the mob owns this building or something and they're like doing something really creepy back there and I was freaked out so I drove away and then on the other side of the building I saw that it was a uh, Purdue chicken processing plant so clearly they had been offing chickens in the back of their property which is still gross and really unacceptable thing to do but it it's kind of like slightly less frightening than the thing that was going through my head at the time so that's the the sketch that i produced this is just a thing i never really finished and don't like okay so this is just some objects that i drew while i was at work like um during i'm a substitute teacher and during my free periods i i sketch whatever i happen to have on hand so this is my leatherman uh, multi-tool that was in my bag with my sketching stuff and this is the key to the room that I was in and uh, my car key and and then this is just a saying I like the perfect is the enemy of the good but the original saying I think is don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good but in my case the perfect is almost always the enemy of the good so I put that here because it again it goes with the theme of the book like the un the layered look and the writing and everything it just builds up and builds up in layers so um, I haven't done anything for this page yet. So this is just all, this is just all stuff that's going to be drawn on and hasn't been drawn on yet. This is a tape dispenser and I hate, and I'm, 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 I shouldn't say this because it's going to offend someone, but I really dislike Bauhaus design. I don't like smoothed off edges of things that make everything look like an airplane. I hate buildings that are all like uniformly blah. And I really don't like that whole like cold sort of post-industrial flatness of Bauhaus. And this tape dispenser was Bauhaus. And I was like, Oh, I don't even want to draw it, but I kind of do because there's something about it. And I just did draw it anyway. So that's my little opinion on Bauhaus design. I understand it's probably not shared by everybody. And I'm sure there are good examples of Bauhaus design that I would like. So it's not universal. I don't hate all of Bauhaus design. I just don't like a lot of their architecture. Um, this is my dog that passed away. And I did this little bunch of hearts up there. Um, and then this is a design for part of the back of my daughter's backpack, which I haven't done yet, but I did in fact do this backpack. Um, and this is my older daughter's backpack design and she's got these big circular things on her backpack. So at the end of the video, I'll have a little modeling session with her and have her show her backpack. Now, let's see. This is just all the lists that I haven't finished doing stuff. Okay, so this is, uh, I think, like a rather bad drawing of my daughter. It's my first attempt to do any kind of drawing with water-soluble graphite pencils. I had never used them before, but I really do, in fact, like them quite a bit. 
So that was, um, yeah, so that was that. The glasses were pretty hard. I had some trouble with the glasses. And I, I made her face look too fat. She's really quite a bit prettier than that. Um, but it definitely was interesting to learn how to do a portrait with the water-soluble graphite. And I felt like the hair, the way that the hair kind of came out here was nice. Like, I, I felt like if I can really get it down with the water-soluble graphite, it'll be awesome. And I'll be able to do some nice things with it. Let's see, um, over here we have, this is like a little house thing. Um, these were sketches I did of students that were in my classes. Um, this is just a pocketbook. This is like a bunch of my friends writing to me. And this is, again, this is my daughter. Okay, so my friend wrote that. I didn't write that about myself. That would be a little weird, but this is... This is another sketch of my daughter with the water-soluble graphite, and this is like kind of a cartoon sketch of my daughter with a pencil that I sort of modeled this one off of, or maybe the other way around. I'm not sure. I was looking at her when I did this one, but I was not looking at her when I did the cartoon. Okay, that's my cat. He's pretty awesome. His name is Flopsy. I think he's been in one of my videos because he likes the chair that I sit on to do about half of my videos and won't let me won't let me have my chair sometimes he takes it away and he's like me and stuff but not really because he just takes it away by sitting on my lap and purring and just trying to nudge whatever object i'm working with out of my hand this is like little tiny pen sketches of little teeny weeny flowers and stuff and the reason that i did this was because i was just thinking about little designs for the backpack all right, so next page we got here. Ah, yes, this is my paints. I just did a bunch of paints. And, like, I think this is funny because, like, when do I have time for art? Like, there's all these days of the week on here in the background, and then there's this stuff on top of it. And uh, I use, these are, like, Artist Loft brand paints from Michaels or something. I use really cheap materials, and, and for the most part, like, and the reason I do that is because I have, young children and whenever you're a person who has young children you tend to think of any money that you're not spending on your kids or household expenses as being money that you shouldn't be spending so um i i very infrequently spoil myself with stuff but i have tried to start making exceptions with that because i also realized that you know art is my career and i need to do i need to facilitate that for myself so this is just all junk i think this is like oh yeah and here's my cat and he's standing in the front yard and i did this as a watercolor sketch without thinking about it and then realized i hadn't put any background on the paper and it was like wrinkling like crazy so i stopped and i don't know what i'm going to do with this i i may like try to gesso over it but the problem here is like that whole penny wise and pound foolish thing of buying a cheap sketchbook because this paper is way too thin to watercolor on and i don't think there's anything else in here at the moment okay so for now, we are done. We will revisit this a fourth time because it's such a huge, like it's, the paper is very thin, but there's a lot of it. And so it's probably going to take me a while to go through this sketchbook. And I don't want to bore you by making super long videos. And um, so that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And I wish you all a very good night. Take care. Okay, this is Marielle, and this is her awesome backpack that I painted. And she basically selected the design. Her favorite color is orange. She was very tired of the backpack in its previous pink state and it's wanted an orange one. I mean, waterproof, not waterproof. Waterproof, yes. I also sprayed it with a, uh, like a, a Krylon varnish or um what's that called krylon polyurethane uh fixative to make it gloss polyurethane gloss medium i think or gloss fixative anyway that's it it's pretty awesome and uh it's formerly an ll bean backpack so it would last forever and i knew that and that's why i did that very nice thank you mario